everybody. It's Rob again. It's time for another member talk, and this one's going to be an exciting episode. We have with us today Nikki Wiedemann. Nikki Wiedemann is from Dead Ringers. Uh, Dead Ringers is a great company that we've found. Actually, I, I first found them uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, they're fun. They, you know, they, they do all sorts of stuff, but the biggest thing they do is they help us talk to our clients on the telephone which is a very important thing that we need. Nikki, welcome to Member Talks. How are you today? Thank you. We like to think of ourselves as irreverent, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> the name in itself is, is, is one thing, Dead Ringers. But I'm, thanks for having me today. This is fun. Um, but yeah, Dead Ringers, we are a call analysis um, firm. Our hearts and funeral service. Uh, next month, I celebrate 31 years in the profession. <laughs> Wow. I'm the field director of Cemeterian, but I got my start with Forethought, um, the life insurance company, years ago and stayed with them for about 26 years. So my roles were varied there, but um, my last role was managing a call center, sales call center team. And so um, being surrounded by customer service agents, um, becoming a student of good phone customer service, having to use the phone myself. My first job out of college was a credit card company. The the, the number you call when on the back of your card, that was me. So oh, no. I, I call. Yeah. <laughs> so um, stepped away um, for a little bit thinking I was going to go in kind of to a micro retirement mode for a, a while. And um, my friend Paula Masters, who started the company Dead Ringers, approached me. Mm -hmm. And I was literally out of the profession for two months and right back in um, working with them. So it's been a lot of fun. And we're in our fifth year as a company. And that being said, basically what we do is place calls into your business. We are secret shoppers. That's a term I want to change. I'm not necessarily a fan of that, but um, we call into your business. We ask basic questions that you would get from most consumers and we record the calls. We take it one step further in that we provide metrics behind it too. So you, using um, dead ringers, you have what's called your headquarters or our dashboard and Wow. Everything that we do for you is housed online. So the call recordings, and then it's all metrics based. It's our goal to stay as objective as possible. Now I tend to get subjective as I train people and we have a lot of fun with that, but we know metrics are important and you can't improve something unless you don't know where you stand. So um, we spend a lot of time uh, creating data that's meaningful from the beginning of the call to the end of the call. So um, that being said, my role is to now, to analyze those calls, then also work with clients one-on-one -on -one for training everywhere from uh, sitting down with one particular person to doing classroom training. Haven't done much of that with the current situation, uh, but uh, yeah, so training is what I love to do. And um, that's, that's who Dead Ringers is. Well, it sounds very interesting. I know I actually call lots of funeral homes uh, here in Washington and, and for that matter, all over. Uh, for various reasons, and what a difference it makes to call a funeral home that maybe hasn't really quite looked at what it is that they do on the phone or how they talk on the phone versus one that has actually sat down and considered that and considered what is the person on the other end of that phone hearing. Um, and, and I know you, you mentioned that we're going to hear a few examples <laughs> of maybe what not to do and hopefully maybe what to do. <laughs> yeah, we call them cringeworthy calls and um, we've struggled to find a really good example. Um, the team got together and we even kind of scripted what we thought would be a good call and we're like, this just doesn't feel right. And so yeah. my mission is, you know, with the firms that we work with is to get that really good call. There's no perfect call. I mean, people are, you know, grieving that are usually calling in and it's, um, really hard to hit all of the points, but at least having a, a roadmap to work from when you hear that phone ring until it, you hang it up, uh, it, I think is really important. And I think within the profession too, um, if, they, if you go to mortuary school, that's not a part of the curriculum. The curriculum is all about the arrangement process, or if you're in sales, it's all about the sell, you know, selling pre-need, whatever that might be, but it's um, phone skills are so important and it's that first impression. And I know that's kind of a trite saying, you know, first impressions are everything, but it is so important. And if you're a firm that's really busy, we know when, when folks 
are bombarded with calls because of the voice, you hear it in the voice. So, yeah. yeah. So we haven't found that perfect call yet. So maybe after this podcast, I'll, um, I'll start calling firms in Washington State and see what happens. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, we talk so much about that first impression and really that's it. I mean, how does, how does a customer get to you? We focus a lot on that with internet, with social media, with, you know, all that stuff, but how do they get to you? And then what is that impression that they have once you actually pick up the phone? That is so crucial to have that good training, that good empathy. That's really, I, I, I give you an example. I talked to, or I called a funeral home the other day and uh, it was amazing. It was, thank you for calling XYZ funeral home. Please hold. And I'm thinking, my goodness, if, if I was a family that, that just lost the loved one uh, uh, or a friend or somebody, and I'm instantly put, not even asked to be put on hold, but just immediately put on hold. And then to actually sit there for what felt like an hour, it was probably more like maybe a minute, but oh my gosh, it was, it was crazy. Uh, I finally got upset and hung up and called them on their cell phone and said, you know, we need, you probably, you probably want to listen to this next podcast that we're getting ready to do. <laughs> yeah. I, I, get off yeah, here, I, I'll give you their name. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to talk over you there, but um, I have a whole section in my training about the hold. Yeah. And importantly is if you have to transfer a call, what that experience is like. And so um if you were to ask a consumer of any business, the thing they hate most about calling a business is being put on hold and never asking for permission. That is a huge no, no, huge no, no. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we're so busy. We can't take your call right now. I mean, I don't care how busy you are. <laughs> Answer yeah, yeah. the phone and, you know, um, apologize if you have to, you know, we're all human, but um, that's rude. It's, there's lack of empathy, I think, with that. So, yeah, I'm sorry you had that experience. And you're well, not, you know, you know <laughs> it, it's okay. It's okay. Actually, I, what was worse was about an hour later, I got on the phone and tried to call a hospital for some a, a personal reason. Uh, they put, you know, you go through the press one for this, press two for that. I pressed two or whatever number it was, and I actually waited on hold from that one, listening to the same repeated music uh, looping. Uh, for 25 minutes. And I finally just hung up the phone and said, it doesn't matter. Whatever the question was, I, I forgot it already. So uh, I, I, I just can't imagine how many people experience something like that. Yeah. Um, especially in the funeral profession, that's the last place you want to experience something like that. So, so you guys got some training. Uh, normally, if we're not COVID, uh, and you can get out and about <laughs> Uh, yeah. You guys can actually come in and sit down. Well, let, uh, let me not explain it. I want you to explain it. Explain yeah. what you do for your training uh, so, so that uh, uh, our listeners know. Yeah, so we have um, just really basic offerings where we'll, we'll do recordings for you. And if you want, you can engage us, but um, take a listen to them. Um, if you want to move from there and do your own spot training, those that's one way to approach it. Um, we have what we call a monthly maintenance package where we'll place a minimum of five calls each month into your business. And then we consult with you within after a year period to say, okay, here's where you started. And then here's, here's your score um, at the end of the, the 12 month period. And then from there we do um, training similar to this in a zoom environment. Um, it's not as fun. I think as a classroom training that I do, but definitely um after 45 minutes to an hour, people zone out on the Zoom. <laughs> so we do, we tend to do those in one hour chunks and we offer up to three to four hours of training, depending on, on um, how far you're willing to go with your time. And then I do where I travel the country and we get groups together. It's usually large firms that have, you know, maybe more than six or seven folks that are answering the phone. Um, and it's not just necessarily funeral homes. It could be a combination firm, you know, so I've got cemetery questions. I've got funeral questions. I've got cremation questions, pet loss. I mean, there's just so many different um, areas that we focus on. And so we'll, we'll spend a day with you and, and take you nuts to bolts again, basics of etiquette and kind of a, a side note here. I didn't think I'd have to focus on etiquette. 
<laughs> when I took this position, I've been around funeral homes a long time. You know, I've heard really good conversations and not so great conversations, but simple things like chewing gum. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, so, it, you know, these are the things that you do when you answer a phone. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of our package from, you know, we can place one call in your firm. We can place hundreds. It just depends on, on how you want to approach it. And so our website lines that all up for you. It's deadringers.co, deadringers.co if you wanted yeah. to take a look at it. So, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll put that on the screen here so people can look that up and check it out a little bit. Yeah, I just, it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, the, the phone seems so simple. It just seems like it's a, a, a part of us. It seems like it's just how we do it, but yet it's so difficult to operate it correctly. Um, you know, you talked about chewing gum and etiquette. I'm guilty of it. I'll, I'll admit, you know, being sitting here talking to somebody and reach over, they, you, they call in the middle of lunch and you will take a quick bite of your sandwich. They can hear all that. They can hear you chomping yeah, on whatever a, it is you're chomping on. And I've got a call we can listen to about that. You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll do that here this afternoon if, if you would like, but yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That, yeah. Background noise. If you're in a busy office, you know, hearing all of the, the noise and commotion around you, there's just simple things like that, that, take the sheen off the professionalism, you know, of what it is that you're offering to your community. So mm -hmm. every little thing, you know, it matters. And you know, the phones are so important to us, you know, I've got your, your smartphone everywhere that you go, but um, right. we found too that technology is also a hurdle that some of our clients work with is like, you know, I mentioned the transfer earlier. How do you get the call from one person to the next? There's these, um, phone systems now that can dim the lights in your town. I mean, they're just fabulous, but if you don't know how to use them, it's, it's, it's a, you know, an expense that's probably not worth it. So sure. yeah, technology yeah. is important as, as well. So yeah. Transfer a call to somebody then they, and then never tell them. And so the, the caller will sit there forever. Yeah. That, that's, or get that, your voicemail. that's the, that's another thing that just, let me transfer you to, to Jim and you get transferred and then you go right into his voicemail, you know? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that, oh, that's annoying to me. You know, I, I, I just, it happens, but I, it should not happen at all in our profession. Espe you know, right. especially if someone is grieving, there's this, you know, immediate situation and you end up in someone's voicemail, you know, and I've worked with some firms that have lost calls because, you know, there wasn't someone there to address their needs and it, there yeah. was an urgency there that they just, they didn't find that was important. And they did everything they could to get the call back in one particular instance. I think they finally did, but um, that, that experience will sit with that family for, you know, forever. So, yeah. Well, we've, we've said it on the show a number of times. Um, it's our, it, it should be our goal uh, as funeral providers to earn the trust of every single person that walks through that door. Uh, I, I would say the same thing for every single person that calls you on the phone. The difference is when somebody walks through the door, you can tell sometimes by their body language, what they're coming in for. If they're coming in to pay a bill. If they're coming in to talk, if they're coming in because they've just lost somebody and they don't know what to do. Um, you can kind of get that sense when you see them walk through the door with a phone call you don't get that option. So you have to be on your game each and every time you pick up that phone. And even if it is putting them on hold or transferring them, you better do it right. Cause yeah, absolutely. You'll lose, you'll lose the call. Uh, yeah. You'll lose the call quickly. Yeah. And I, I think too, um, we think we, we, you know, there are families. I hear, I've heard that for 30 years, but you, these days the loyalty is just not there like it used to be. That's I'm true. from a very small town in Indiana. There's only one place to go that I understand. But you know, when you're in a market where you have more than one firm, you know, that loyalty is just not, not the same anymore. So um, yeah. having a good phone experience, especially now, you know, there are restrictions in how many folks can come into the facility. I'm sure it varies by city or state, but sure. um, the phone yeah. become much more important. Um, we were a little concerned, just like everyone, how this would affect our company. Um, the you know the the economic fallout, I guess you could say, with COVID. But people, I think, now know. Oh my, we've had to use the phone much more in in our 
you know, services mm-hmm. now than we ever have before. So we've been very lucky and blessed that we're, you know, going like gangbusters. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you touched on something there um, that I kind of want to reiterate because we see quite a bit of that in, in Washington State is you might be the only person, the only firm in your town, for that matter, in your county. Um, mm-hmm. But that you mentioned it and there, the loyalty is not there anymore. We are a very mobile society, very tech based society, and people will go to where they find that value. If that's a price point value, if it's a empathy point value, they're going to go where they find that. Um, Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily going to come to your front door because you're the only one in the county. And you can see that all over the state. We've got a number of of places that are very mobile and are in just about every county. They may only have one office in the state, but they go into every county and Mm -hmm. are operating in those counties uh, as a funeral home. So you've got to do everything you can to keep them. And if, if the phone skills is where it's at, uh, by all means, get the training. It, it's not that expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. And um, even listening to podcasts like this, anything that you can do to do your own research, you know, I think is really important. Um, my idol is Nancy Friedman. I don't know if you've heard of her, but her name, she's the telephone doctor. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, She's been around for a long time and she's still really relevant today. And, um, she has podcasts and, um, YouTube snippets all the time. And so she's tough cookie. I mean, she doesn't, I'm a little, you know, I tend to be a little nicer there, but I mean, uh, she, she really makes you think about what you do. And my favorite quote from her is if there's a phone, on anyone's desk within your business, they should be trained to use it. And anyone. So, you know, if you were to shut your eyes and think of everyone within your um, facility that has access to a phone, do they know how to use it? Do they know what to say? Uh, I know a lot of times we use part-time help within the profession. So, you know, do they know how to, to, you know, should they get on the phone? Um, Answering services. I've, I've got a couple of recordings where the answering service you know, you need to shop your answering service as if you're flipping the phones, you know, at night, you know, whatever right. that might be and how they address your, you know, the family's calling in. That's important too. So a lot of right. them do a really great job. In some instances, the phone services outshine the funeral directors, you know, it just, just depends because they are trained. Um, so, yeah. Well, that's a great point. I think we get really tied up with, well, you know, the receptionist, she's going to be the one answering the phone or, you know, the, the intern, they're going to be the one answering the phone. That's their job. But that's not always the case. If the phone's ringing, somebody's got to pick it up. And you're absolutely right. Whether they're part-time, full-time, licensed, unlicensed, whatever the case might be, they've got, they're that first contact. They're the first impression that the family gets, whether they've been a long-term, you know, 30-year loyal family or a brand new family. That's yeah. that first impression. And so, Boy, that training of, of just being able to pick it up and, and do something more than just say hello seems seems to be uh, just so important. Yeah, I know um, a lot of times I like to call them the facilitators and, you know, they're the ones that if there's a firm, they're answering the phone, they may not be the licensed person, but they're directing and facilitating where the calls go. And so uh, it's really important that they provide that first impression. Um, obviously, the facilitator that answered your call the other day, you know, put you on hold right away. But um, yeah. you mentioned putting the interns and I mean, that's not fair to them. You know, yeah. I, I want, I want clients to think about that. Is that who you really want answering the phone? And if you do, then you spend a lot of time training them because it's almost like, well, we hate the phones. I know phones are painful at times. We get those calls that we don't like, but that's, you know, um, don't make it appear to be grunt work. That's the, you know, other than the arrangement, I think sometimes it's that first call that comes in that, that, that's so important. You set the tone immediately, you know, from that first call. So. Well, and I've talked with some folks that have not necessarily used dead ringers, have used somebody else. Uh, but same thing, that kind of that secret shopper, if you will, um, idea. And the one complaint that I've heard is, oh my gosh, they call me at the most inopportune times. And then I got to play the game of, of, you know, pretending like this is 
this is a real thing. The point though is this, people call you at the most inopportune time. I mean, you could be, the phone rings, you could be in the middle of a uh, preparation in the embalming room, or, you know, you could be in the middle of a funeral. You could be in the middle of a, you know, depending on where you're at, you've got to be ready to go each and every time. And so. Yeah. yeah know, we work with clients and, you know, some will say, well, don't call us during the lunch hour. I'm like, no, that's exactly when I'm going to call you. Because <laughs> yeah. how do you handle those high call volume times or when your staff is, uh, sure. Uh, you know, let's not, let's see how we do at all times of the day. And then um, we get to the point where we'll actually, um, if there's someone on staff at a certain possibly place to catch certain people on the phone. So, um, you know, we do everything that we can to try to get, you know, from the be beginning of the day to nighttime, you know, whenever that, that phone rings, because it, people don't just wait and say, okay, I'm going to call at 10 a.m. You know, yeah. That's not how it works. We're on call 24 hours a day. So. Sure. Yeah. Well, I am so curious. I want to hear some of these cringeworthy calls. I know I've experienced some and I've, I've thought to myself, man, I wish I would have recorded that because as much as I disliked it, when I thought about it, it was actually kind of comical how bad it really was. But yeah. I, I want to hear some, uh, some of yours now. I, and I know that um, we're not going to be putting, throwing anybody under the bus. So uh, we're good with that. But um I'm going to switch this over so you can actually uh, operate it and then okay. from there, play it, uh, play some of these calls for us. Okay. So you, I, I think you've got the hosting duties I now. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen here. So just real quick, I'll point out if you're uh, watching or listening on the podcast, uh, you're not going to see what we're doing, but if you check us out on YouTube, you'll be able to watch this. So check them out yeah. in both places. Yeah. So you'll just definitely be able to hear the calls. Yeah. But, um, uh, three things, just, this is really high level. Is there really three parts to the call? The introduction is how you answer the call, you know, setting the stage, the conversation. And what happens once you get into the meat of the call, are you, um, you know, just answering questions, yes or no, you know, are you trying to make a connection and then closing the call, you know, a first impression and a last impression, those things. And so um, kind of with those things in mind, we've recorded some calls based on each of these areas. And um, again, we call them cringeworthy. <laughs> so I'll kind of move through some of them. I've, I've got quite a few calls here, but I'll pick out some of the, the gems, I guess you could yeah. say. So, okay. Answering service. Uh, yes, I was trying to get a hold of the uh, funeral home. Is, are they not open today? Or? They may be in the office. They just have it with their phones. Yeah, so I, I don't know if you could hear that, but the answering service says, well, I don't know. They're, you know, they're, it's kind of that feeling. Are, are they there today? So, oh, sure. And, yeah. yeah, again, the answering service is so important that you actually um, shop them. So I think with this particular firm, they shared this with their service. And so, you know, getting feedback, you know, you pay a lot of money if you're using an answering service. I'm personally not a fan, but um, you know, that's just me. I get on a soapbox every now and then, but um, make sure they're trained to your, you know, your expectations. It's so important. Absolutely. They're, they're the ones representing you. So you should do that. You should have them trained to do exactly what you want them to do. Our office hours are Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. We are closed each day for the lunch hour from 12 to 1 p.m. If you know the three-digit extension of the person you are calling, please enter it now or make your choice from the following options. To dial by name, press 1. For a listing of staff, press 4. For our department directory, press 5. To leave a message in the general message center, press 0. Wow. For the administration department, press 1. For the finance department, press 2. For cemetery inquiries, press 5. For the planning department, invalid entry. Please try again. <laughs> invalid entry. Please try again. Yeah. I, when I first heard this call, I'm like, Please. invalid entry. Oh, yeah. Please try again. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So this huge menu and, um, you know, you push a button and then we couldn't even get to the person. You heard the invalid entry, you know, and so they more or less said the entire organization, you know, 
no one has your three digit extension unless they're right. family. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you need a live person answering those calls. If you are a busy firm, then I say menu items more than two, you know, <laughs> people don't want those menus. And if you're like me, I just start pressing zero. You know, get yeah. me a live person. My husband spends a lot, of, he's a contractor and he's on the phone a lot with utilities and things like that. And so he, he'll go, human, human. <laughs> you know, it's like we've lost, yeah. you know, interaction. So, and know yeah. if your menu is not working. Um, and she doesn't even really say the word cemetery until really hidden down into the, you know, the tree of that, right. that menu. So, yeah, it's what a nightmare. And if I'm experiencing a loss, I mean, that just adds to the frustration and sadness and all the things that go with grief. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, especially now, you know, uh, depending on where you're at, you may not even be able to be with your loved one when they die uh, due to restrictions, gathering restrictions. And to have that type of a loss where you can't be there to know that they've passed, to pick up a phone and call because you opened up a, you know, a Google entry and you picked the first place that was on there and this is what you get. That would be extremely frustrating to me. Yeah. And if I am that, um, you know, death care establishment that I'm spending all those Google analytics dollars mm -hmm. and then, you know, Hey, I want to pop to the top and then you do. And then you have, you know, put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, make sure that the follow through, there's a continuum there that, you know, if you're making those, you know, it doesn't stop with just people clicking on your phone number. You know, it's like what happens once the phone rings. So, yeah, yeah. I talked to Ellery and Welton. Um, he was also a part of um, uh, the, the uh, what, what last um, podcast I did. And it's like, that's what Welton does. He's with a company called Ring Ring. And um, I, I love the name of that company too, but it, he helps to optimize your results online, but then you, you got to be able to take it from there once, uh, once the phone rings. So, yeah. And that's actually, uh, we'll give them a quick plug. They've, they've been on, on here before. Um, Ellery Bowker and Welton Hong on elevating the podcast. They've got a great show that comes out, I think weekly. Um, mm -hmm. and that's one of the places that I've actually heard, heard you Nikki and, uh, yeah, at, They've got a great show. You can check them out too. So, yeah, yeah. but I bet you got a couple more for us there. Yes. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Are you listening as well? Hey, all that's included in it. There's no like hidden, you know, bullshit. So. Yeah. So the, the gal, our um, dead ringer said, you know, are your prices online? And, it's like, yeah, we don't hide anything. There's no BS, you know, and he actually <laughs> used the word and wow. talk about etiquette, you know, um, I don't know. That's just, I can't imagine within our profession that this guy is still employed, but that's just, <laughs> so, out there. you know, yeah, this is the stuff that we're hearing. So, yeah. yeah. Crazy. And does he have pacemaker? Um, no. Okay. And about how much does he weigh? Uh, I would say about 160, maybe. Okay. And do you anticipate a death to occur in a residence, a long-term care facility, or a hospital? Okay. <laughs> um, so this is an actual first, well, it's not an actual, but this is the first time somebody's called the funeral home to re talk about the person. And, and that's the first question or one of the first yeah. questions is pacemaker and weight and where do you anticipate they're going to die? Yeah, these are all, all, there was no connection with, with the person calling at all. And I just want us to hear that these are all, we get caught up in our vital stats sheets or, yeah. you know, if I hear the word death certificate probably on 60 to 70% of our calls. That's not the time to start. Those are things you talk about later, unless the person asks about them. So yeah. this almost sounds like an intake call for my doctor. You know, how much do you weigh? Do you have, a, you know, it's all um, technical stuff when, you know, tell me about, you know, your husband, you know, tell me about the person, um, you know, if they're asking about cremation, why is it today that you're, um, what is it about cremation that you want to learn? I'm, I, you know, I'm here to help you and saying, yeah. I'm sorry for your loss. 
<laughs> oh, just that yeah. statement yeah. there is tremendous. Yeah. So we what hear about, a lot. Of, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, what about industry terms? You know, you taught, you said death certificate. What about, we got to get some information for the DC. Yeah. The What's DC, the DC? <laughs> yeah. It's not a city on the East coast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we, there are certain words we use. Um, the word remains. I don't, I don't like that one. Um, again, we need to put our ourselves in the, the shoes of the person making the call. Um, you know, at need versus pre need. Those are our terms, you know, um, making arrangements that's at need, you know, planning ahead that's pre need. Um, mm -hmm. so again, really, um, considering the types of words, you know, that we use that me are meaningful to us in the office and not meaningful to folks that are calling in. So, yeah. Wow. Crazy. You're probably looking at around, uh, seven to 10,000, depending on what you want. Seven to 10,000? Okay. And roughly, what would that be you coming with? Okay. That one's not coming through so well, but did, did I hear yeah. the, the funeral home say, I'd like to get a burger and a small drink? Yes. <laughs> so he was, um, uh, he was in a, um, in a drive through and he took the call. He was on his cell phone. Um, and that call went on for a long time. And, you know, he, he obviously wasn't engaged and it's okay. Um, I think this was, uh, we set it up as a pre-need call. You know, this guy was interested in making arrangements for his dad. And um, uh, so I think the facilitator back at the the office said, well, I'll send it to our sales guy. Well, if you're getting a call on a cell phone for one pullover and take the time, you know, or I'm sorry, right now I, I've just got my lunch. Give me five minutes and I'll give you a call right back. It's okay, you know, to apologize and be human, but that is totally unacceptable. What, what just happened there. And <laughs> Yeah. So I don't, I don't mean to, to be gross uh, on this, but this happened to me here about two weeks ago now talking with somebody. And um, as I've been talking right in the middle of, of the conversation, I can hear the toilet flushing in the background and I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, am I just having a business call with somebody in the bathroom? Yeah. You know, at least put it on mute. <laughs> <laughs> at least have the courtesy to mute the call. <laughs> you know, and excuse yourself. You would do that in a face-to-face -face situation. Hey, I, I need to step away for just a second. Is that okay? Yeah. We'll call you right back. I mean, it, yeah. Um, we've had calls where we know that the the person taking the call is in the prep room. Mm -hmm. You know, because we know those sounds. Um, sure. We, we can hear the radio playing in the background while they're, they're doing their work. It's just, um, we really need to to think about um, what's happening around us, not just necessarily what's happening in the conversation. So, yeah, well, I just, I, you know, I can't say it enough. I mean, it just, the phone is key. And until we figure out a way to communicate without the phone, um, we got to figure this out better. It's got to just be done better. And I yeah. think, and that's where dead ringers is going to be a big benefit. Tell us, Tell us how we can get in touch with you, get in touch with Dead Ringers, how we can get out there and say, come help us. Come help us yeah. figure this out because we have calls of, you know, from the drive through. We have calls from the prep room. We don't want that. We want to be a little more yeah. professional. So tell us how we can get in touch with you. Yeah, well, definitely our website. Um, it's deadringers.co. And the phone is so important to me is that I give you my direct line. I don't want you to have to go through some menu like you just heard. So my number is 513-225-5935. Let me repeat that. 513-225-5935. My email is Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E, at deadringers.co. 
So um, I prefer to be able to chat with you directly. Um, that's, we're, we're um, using our own advice, you know, and being able to connect with folks to, directly. Um, I know sometimes um, we don't want to provide our own personal number, but that I think takes away from the genuineness of what it is that we do. So sure. um, oh. definitely give me a buzz. I'd love to talk to all of you. Um, and then once um, I can start traveling, Washington is one of my favorite states. So, you know. Well, I bet <laughs> yeah, I know I'd someone that would love to see you. Yeah, <laughs> love to come visit. So, um, but yeah, we, we really enjoy it. We make the, the training, um, whether it is on Zoom or it is in classroom, it's very interactive. It's not just me or, you know, up there um, chatting. So it's important, I think, that we're engaged in that. And um, for those of, you know, owners and managers, we do not um, embarrass your staff. We don't play any of your calls <laughs> to the folks within the training. Those are things that we do um, offline. So. Yeah. And our callers are um, targeted within your own marketplaces. So um, let's say it's Seattle. I know that it's King County and it's, you know, whatever the, the folks calling know your marketplace, know how to pronounce the names of, of certain areas. And um, I don't think it's so much important anymore, but if you're using caller ID, it would be the, the right um, area code for your, your market. So, but yeah. Well, you did two things there that I've heard repeatedly. Um, the first one was your repeating of your phone number. And I'm sure that's part of the training of if you are leaving a message, repeat the number. How many yeah, times yeah. do we get a message? Hey, can you call me back? I'm at... <laughs> what? <laughs> and that's it. They never they never repeat it. So you never get the call back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm sure that's part of the training as well uh, yeah. in there. Um, we also do our, um, we do live webinars. Um, I haven't gotten a podcast yet because if I did a podcast, it'd be four hours, you know, <laughs> <laughs> cause I get to go, we go. but, um, we have Facebook page. Um, if you wanted to look yeah. us up on, on Facebook and we do uh, live webinars every, um, first Thursday of the month. So I believe our next one is February 4th. So, um, and the topic is so rude. I'll just leave it at that. So, <laughs> so we, we've got some real doozies of folks yeah. being super rude. So, yeah. Well, and, and not to let the cat too far out of the bag just yet, but uh, I would like to tell you, uh, or at least tell our listeners that as members, we are working on a way to connect with dead ringers and make this be a part of your member member benefits package. So we'll put that together. We'll get that out and um, let people know that this is a great way to uh, to learn. It's a great way to make things happen better at your facility. Absolutely. And you might just pick up more calls. I mean, I yeah. can I I know for a fact that uh, I know plenty of people that have lost calls uh, because of their telephone skills. So those calls go somewhere. So it's probably going to go to the person that answers the phone correctly. Yeah. Great. So well, thanks for Nikki, having me. It's, fun. Yeah, it's been a blast. Thank you for coming on and talking with us. Uh, thank you for doing what you do. Um, you oh, know, it's, welcome. it's one of those things that we get so complacent, so uh, forgetful about uh, just answering the phone. It just seems so easy, but yet it's so difficult. And so I'm, I'm grateful that you guys, you and Paul and, and everybody there, have um, come up with a way to say, you know what, let's, let's relook at it. It's always good to relook at stuff and, and figure out how to do it better. So thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. One little piece of advice. Have you called you lately? So everyone that's uh, listening to the podcast or watching it on to do me a favor and have your good friend call into the firm and just see what happens and oh, yeah. go listen and, you know, look us up and I'm, I'm excited of what we can do specifically with your um, member base. So, yeah. But have you called you lately? That's just, just think of that. So I did that actually the other day on accident. I called my cell phone. Well, I called my cell phone, not on accident, but because I lost it. And, <laughs> um, you know, so I was trying to find it. I used my wife's phone to call. What I discovered in doing that and you call you uh, was my voicemail on my cell phone was terrible. It was terrible. I had dogs barking in the background and, and it's just like, what, what was I thinking when I did this? So yeah. it was a great way to, to really figure out what we're doing and to get a better message across. Yep. So, awesome. Right. Well, Nikki, thank you. It's been a lot of fun. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure how we end it because I think you're still on it. <laughs> you still <Yes>. have it? <laughs> okay. Technology. We'll, we'll, we'll edit that part out or we can leave it in because that's kind of funny anyway. So. That's the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> We're human. We are human. We do a number of these podcasts with our president. She and I get on here and this is kind of how it works. It's just back and forth of laughing at each other. (laughs) So you're the host now. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Uh, Certainly Um, it's been a lot of fun and I look forward to working with you. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Thanks everybody. Bye everybody.